Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the sofa, and this is my better, jaded, but also still really, really cute sidekick, Mr. Roscoe B. Coltrane. And as you know by now, or don't you know, my name's Paul. So you saw the thumbnail, you clicked it, you're here, welcome. We're gonna be talking about all things Barry and Morphew today. So if you've been following that case, you know, a lot of things have taken place recently, right? They released a bunch of the documents after his prelim, or when that was going on. Some body camera footage has just come out. Uh, the judge, there's going to be a new judge, all this stuff. So what I wanted to do today is just kind of go through some of the stuff, videos, documents, pictures, that kind of a thing, offer my thoughts and opinions on them, and kind of go from there. As I always say, I ain't no doctor, I ain't no lawyer. I ain't a shrink and I ain't a journalist. I'm just a guy with a sofa back there and a couple of cents worth of opinions on a true crime that I want to offer you. So there's that. So let's go ahead and just jump into the video. And what I want to do first is talk about the situation with the judge. So the Chaffee County District Court Judge Patrick Murphy, he's no longer going to be presiding over Barry Morphew's case. So remember the woman Shoshona Dark who is allegedly not Barry Morphew's gal pal, but you know, the evidence kind of says differently regardless. So remember she got that trespassing charge. She was going to pick a package up at Barry's former address. You know, he and Suzanne's former home that we all know at this point. It's been sold. And so she went to pick it up. She got a trespassing charge. The owners wanted to press charges. Prosecution was like, eh, not really enough there to go forward with it, whatever. So the judge was removing himself from it because he was like, you know what? I know somebody really well who works at the firm that is representing her. And so this has just kind of come back. She, it looks like she's going to be called as a witness in Barry Morphew's case trial. And so basically the judge, for the same type of reason, is having to remove themselves. This person the judge has known for like 40 years, I think it said, went to high school with them, family, friends, all that kind of stuff. So it, it definitely has conflict of interest written all over it. I am, ha I mean, I'm glad that they are dying their eyes and crossing their T's on this whole situation. Um, you know, I hate to see the judge go or whatever, but it is what it is. Anything that is going to possibly muddy the water for however the conviction or not conviction or whatever is going to end up going, right? Uh, so I just, I appreciate it when they do these things just to make sure that everything is on par. Now, next, what I want to look at, before we get into the documents that were released, I want to look at some of the body cam footage that was released. So I went through it and I basically just picked out some clips that I'm kind of like, eh, I've got some opinions on this one. So let's start off with the body cam footage of when they found the bike and i've just kind of narrowed this down to one little thing and so we're going to watch it and then i'm going to kind of point out some of the the commentary that i have on that somebody check me buddy check me on can you try to call the husband and see what type of bike she has right now i'm staring at a santa cruz blue and color Okay, so here's the things that I have to say about that clip. And again, it's just a very short clip from that. So you see the bike position. Now we've seen some pictures of it, stuff like that before. And I guess what I'm getting at is even watching this, you know, with the body cam footage, seeing you know, movement, not just picture, that kind of a thing. To me, I just have several questions. So first of all, it is still 100% serving somebody through the bike down the hill, right? Uh, it is not giving me any energy of Suzanne got in a wreck, any of this kind of stuff that was thrown out there, or a mountain lion got or anything like that. If you look at the video, you look at those rocks, and so if you go, I'm looking at it in two perspectives, right? The first thing of us, of this is a missing person. Nobody really 
in this very beginning time knew there was something nefarious going on or whatever. So even the thought process of this could potentially be a missing person and a logical thing to go to would be they got in a wreck or why is there a bike down here, right? The bike doesn't look all that damaged. It looks like it just kind of it was honestly thrown down the hill. Well, again, I just wonder if the people who are on the scene were looking at it like, yeah, there's no blood. You saw those rocks that were there even if the rocks weren't there okay imagine going over that hill and like wrecking there's no way i'm not saying you want to survive it but you would not come out of that unscathed at all okay so there was that part with it now i know the officer touching the bike you know and i go two ways with that of like Ugh, why do we touch it um but then also it's like well it was a missing person case at that point i mean i don't think they really understood that it was going to go to this level but still it was kind of cringy to see that take place where i was like no no oh my god um so there's that but it is what it is at this point so uh, that whole thing right there then again when we get into the documents we're gonna look at a little bit more but as you know this is not too far down from the house uh, where barry and suzanne lived the helmet was found like i believe a mile down the road and again once we look at the body cam footage which we're going to here in a minute of when barry came to the scene or whatever that evening um I just, I, I can see the man standing there and throwing the bike over the edge. I mean, I'm sorry. Now, one thing I also want to say before we get too deep into this. So clearly, like if you've been following me, yes, I have a bias towards this. I personally think he had something to do with it. Those are my opinions. Um, I want to see all the evidence in court before I 100% am like, yep, done, whatever. That's what I think. So, I, I mean, I'm not trying to say, you know, oh, he shouldn't get a trial or anything like that. Looking at some of the stuff, I looked at it through, through through two different lenses. I looked at it in the lens of, okay, like, you know, I think he did it. So just like I said, I could see him throwing the bike over there. It looks like someone did that. Then I'm also looking at it through the lens of, well, what is a defense attorney going to say, right? Um, and, and so that kind of thing. So at times I'm going to offer those thoughts on certain things. Um, because if he does have a really good defense team, like I'm hearing that he does, I mean, that kind of gives us pause because some of the stuff I'm like, eh, mind you, there is so much circumstantially incriminating evidence, um, but it, it makes me nervous that he might have a really good team that can like squander out of some of these things. So anyways, let's keep watching. So now what we're going to be watching is some of the body cam footage of when he's being informed, hey, we found her bike that whole thing so i broke it down to a few different clips because there's a lot of stuff i've got to say about it where is it where's the bike oh it's right there where was it it was like just right down here in this little embankment right here so that's why i took this dude uh, we got the husband on the scene here with me Okay, so first of all, I'm going to say this. So I, I don't know Barry personally, right? I don't know what he sounds like at different times and all that kind of thing. So again, this is my bias speaking. To me, it sounds like when he gets out there, oh, where's the bike? It sounds like he is 100% trying to fake cry and get that like crackly, wavery voice, right? So that doesn't seem real. The way he's kind of walking up and looking over, again, every bit of energy that I'm getting, and I ain't no energy healer either. It's just a word I use. But, you know, just so everyone knows, I keep saying that. But it, the energy that I'm getting off of it, I'm like, he was standing there not too long ago throwing that damn bike over there watching it go down there. Almost like that fake surprise of like, oh, it's down there. Oh, let me look. You know, so that's that, right? Okay, then when he goes to hug the friend, notice that he like has his hand in his pocket. And again, it, I don't know what he's like normally or whatever. It just seems like that would be a moment that you would be, you know, both. I mean, I can't because I have Roscoe here. But you know what I mean? Like both hands. I don't know. But again, that's me, you know, doing my, uh, through my lens of what I would do. The, the fact of the matter is we don't know how people would act in different moments. But a lot of us can kind of think you know, or see with these crimes that we watch where it's like that doesn't seem right right so some of barry's actions i'm just like it could just be him i don't know but it just seems a little funny so the hug thing is me being petty let's just be honest about that the voice thing i don't know but it just seems weird so anyways let's keep going oh, okay all right yeah you can go down there is it a crash 
I mean, the bike looked, the way it was laying, it kind of looked like it, but there's not really that much damage to the bike. That's the thing. Lion? Yeah, it was just like lion. Was there no lion? Mountain no, lion? No, I, I didn't see anything that would. I didn't see anything, and they're, they're not letting us go over the side. Because they're, they're getting they're a track. They're bringing dogs. Just right, right, just right down. Ugh. That whole thing, there's a crash. You know, I was just like, that is so fake sounding. To me, it sounds like he's trying to make it look like he's crying or he's really upset and it doesn't sound real. And it also has that, like, you know when you get a big rush of adrenaline and your face kind of goes numb and like that vibe? That's what I, the, the energy that I get off of him is that he's trying to act a certain way. And he's like, maybe in that moment of like, I'm lying and you know, that kind of energy level of, you know, yeah, all of that is here nor there. The first biggest red flag in everything, and I shouldn't say the first one, but like, I can explain away a lot for myself, right? When he says after, is it a crash? Lion? No, 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 mountain lion? You know, where he's looking around and people are like, come on, let's get on the mountain lion bandwagon. That right there, I was like, oh no, 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 no. I do not like it when people try to offer up answers as to why something happened to someone like right out the bat. You know what I mean? Where at this point I'm like, this night, who cares what it was? She's missing her, but you know, I was gonna say mangled bike, but no, her fully operational bike it seems it was laying at the bottom of the hill, which he probably already knows that. So that whole mountain, I think that just a hundred percent. Remember, he came up with like numerous different things that it could have been right off the rip. So he's like already doing that. So even before seeing this, I was like, yeah, I don't like it when people offer up excuses or well it could be this it could be that it could be this and instead of like just being like hey, we don't know she's missing like we don't know like i would just think that's what it is you know it just depends on the scenario but i'm just thinking of people in my life if they went missing i, I mean i want to be like well maybe it was you know i probably would internally and in my own thoughts be doing that but it's something I'd probably offer up because it's just so far out there, unless there was seriously something. But as we've heard from people around there, like a mountain lion attack just isn't that kind of a normal thing for it to be just, you know, him just to spout it off like that right off the rip. She's an avid mountain biker, right? She's just started. She's been here. And just a confirmation, you left this morning at five. Okay. And she she's, told you she was going to yeah, go bike riding? She bikes every day, yeah. Okay. She's, she's going to bike when she gets up. So she was asleep in the bed when you left? Did yeah. you say bye to her or anything? No, she's asleep. Okay. So the last time you probably actually yeah. saw her was this morning. That was it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've been in there. So I got a big job up there. I've been there all day. Yeah. Um, Okay, now there are a couple of things that I caught in this. So first of all, when the guy's talking, and he's like, I mean, she's an avid biker, right? And Barry's like, yeah, she just started. For me, I just took it in this context, even though, I mean, that might be true, right? I just felt like he was shooting down the, because when you think avid bike rider, it's, well, they want to get in a wreck. This wouldn't happen to them. And I just felt like it was Barry being like, no, 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 anything's possible. She just started. She could have wrecked. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of an energy to it. Um, again, I don't know that for a fact at all, right? Then once Barry was like, yeah, yeah, I've got a big job. I've been up there. Again, there's a lot of things that are just too perfect, right? the daughter's out camping. Barry has this job out there. Now we already know the timeline that he gave of when I did the truck here and did, 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 did. I mean, a lot of stuff didn't add up, right? It was like a little bit, you know, shady around the edges. So we already know that. But regardless, we know he went to the hotel. There's evidence there. We're going to talk about that. Um, so there's all, there's is all that, but it's too perfect. It's too presented with a cute little bow on the top. Something just doesn't feel right. And seeing this body cam footage, I'm just like, yeah, I still, it's just confirming the, yeah, something ain't right here from me. Oh, it's all good, man. Um, we're, we're doing the best. We got did they a lot check of people the house? coming. Did they, yeah. They got, did you look through the house? Yeah, they got the house. So what we're doing is we're keeping people in the house because if the dog comes, they want to get a scent from out of the house. Yeah. So they don't want to pollute that scent. So that way we can start trying. And I walked up this. I, like I said, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Nothing looked like. I wonder if she was hurt, if she could climb up the hill. But that's the thing. When we came here, still it was daylight, right? So if she was right here, somebody would have easily, you know what I mean? Just because it was like literally like right down. It was this. I mean, if we saw it coming in, somebody would have definitely seen it too, you know? 
Okay, so red flags in this one. You search the house, you, you've been in the house. You know, that whole thing right there. Again, it just doesn't, it seems like he's trying to be overly agreeable and helpful. But again, I'm sitting here like, yeah, he's just like, oh God, I hope I made sure to cover everything up and yada, yada. One thing that's heartbreaking about this, and again, this is through the lens of my bias and I feel like he had something to do with it, is you hear these people who are trying to help him and obviously they have no idea what's going on at this point except that, you know, she's missing and they found some of her belongings and her bike and it's not, that's not good, obviously. And so they're like one concern, they have like genuine concern and it just, it doesn't feel like I get that from him. Okay, so then towards the end when they're talking about, you know, he mentioned something and, you know, it's like, oh, she, could she have been walking up here? You know, could she have climbed up the hill? It's almost like anything they come up with, he, he opens the door of doubt for something. Well, she could have walked up the hill and walked off. Now, he didn't say walked off, but you get where I'm going. And the guy's like, well, no. And just like we saw, they found that in broad daylight. And again, I'm just like, I mean, if she fell down the hill like that, there would be blood somewhere. There would be signs of this, right? Especially with the rocks and whatnot. And again, even if she didn't hit the rocks, I just feel like, I'm sorry, there would be something there. That would be a nasty, nasty fall. Now, my other thing, too, that obviously we'll learn is once we see that the the other items are found, you know what I mean, a little bit later, the helmet and stuff, well, that right there would tell you, okay, if they were going with the whole thing of, well, maybe she you know, had an accident, that clearly that's not the case. This is somebody disposing of her things or also setting up a scene to make it look like something, you know, constructing a crime scene, if you will. Hey, Barry. Besides, I know the bike is here, but what are some of the paths that, or like the trails? Like she rides this road, she rides up to she rides up to the top, and then she goes up to Fuses. Okay, if there's no snow, she'll go up high. Fuses. She's went down this one a couple of times. Down this one here too. Yeah. Okay. So so double check Fuses over there too, because I think uh, well, more I than miles. I think miles. Yeah, I know. We just want to double check everything. So. Yeah. Did anybody look for foot tracks on the road? I haven't seen anything really, oh, but like um, people tracks were lying. I didn't really notice, but I, I won't lie, I'm not like an expert yeah. tracker or something, you know. Um, Okay, now in this clip right here, and I'm I'm coming to y'all for help in this one because I've tried to listen to it, I've tried to do the audio. Okay, so in the part where he starts talking about, you know, where he's like saying where she goes and all that type of stuff, and he's like, has anybody looked for footprints? I cannot tell if he says after that, like saying, have you looked for lion prints? Those kind of things. If he says that, and again, I don't know if you've, if you've gone through a transcript, if you've been able to do something with audio and can hear it better than this, drop it in the damn comments. Because let's go two different directions here. Let's say he didn't say that, and I'm just misunderstanding him. We know he said the heavy search for footprints, all that kind of stuff. Again, he's leaving all the, he's trying to come up with a solution for it. Which I get, you know, a normal person would want to find her, right? But it's like he's trying to come up with, and let me say excuses, right? He's leaving the doors open for, well, have you looked for footprints? Maybe she walked off. Maybe she did this. Do, 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 do. You know, but if he said the lion footprint thing, then I'm like, oh, no, I'm done. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why that would be there. And maybe I misunderstood it. So there's that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Overall, with the body cam footage here, it, it does not help his case for me, right? Now, again, in a court of law, somebody could probably look at this, and again, 100%, because I agree with this statement, too. We don't, how would you react in this situation? You know, Paul, what would you do? I mean, I get that. You know, this could be his normal reaction. He looks kind of like a guy's guy, and he might not show emotion. Maybe that's how he sounds. Maybe this is his genuine shock thing. You know, I don't know. Um, but I just feel like overall, offering these excuses a moment after this bike discovery, you know, he's offered up an alibi, numerous excuses for what could have happened to her. I mean, he is immediately trying to be like, let's go in this direction. Anything but me. You know what I'm saying? And so that part is just a little sus. I'm not going to lie. So what I want to do now is I want to look at some of the pictures from this document documents I should say that were released I want to look at some of these pictures and again just you know offer some thoughts and commentaries and 
that kind of thing on what I'm seeing there. Okay, so let's talk about the photograph of the dump sites. That's what I call them. This is where they found her stuff, her bike, her helmet, right? So if you look at the Morphe residence and then you go down here and bam, there's her bike. And then bam, you go up there. So again, I don't know 100% which way he was pointing and what he was doing on the road, but it looks like he was pointing in the direction where her, like, oh, she goes up here, she goes up there, that kind of a thing. Well, we we obviously know now that's where her helmet was found now we don't know if he went back and threw that over at a later time you know what I'm saying as things were going on or whatever we know that they found it a little bit later than the bicycle so it's very possible but again it just seems very weird for whatever happened which I 100% do not think she was involved in a wreck I 100% believe somebody planted her bike and her helmet point blank period end of damn story that is what I think happened to those two things. It is too obvious, it is too weird. Personally, I would think if you were trying to cover something up like that and make it like a wreck or something of that nature, you would have just thrown the things over in the same area. So it looks like that. Remember, I mean, her helmet wasn't even all that messed up. So that's where it just seems weird. And that would lend one to think, well, maybe he was going, or you know, allegedly Barry, was going with more of a, Maybe someone abducted her. Again, the mountain lion theory, which he came up with right away, I'm just like, I mean, I would expect to see something. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say about this one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. Okay, so let's talk about the whole tranquilizer, evidence, all that kind of stuff. So remember, one of the things that was going on is the evidence of the pings around the house. So let's take a look at that picture. Now, if you look at this again, I mean, it does look like bam, 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 all you know, these pings running all over the house. Now, the state is saying, okay, in this, you know, it looks like we, they believe that this is when he was chasing after her. You know, he had shot her with the tranquilizer thing, chasing after her. That totally sounds plausible. Barry will say, no, I was shooting at chipmunks. They're totally annoying. Okay, that's you know again i always feel like not alvin not simon not theodore but again it's kind of plausible so i'm like okay well there's that again i'm looking at this through both lenses of the defense that kind of thing so remember these tranquilizers were these little things and they found one in the um in the dryer and so they're like up oh, here's the evidence here's the cap to it whatever now they never found actual like a tranquilizer gun or whatever but Barry did admit to something that I thought was interesting, which again, either he's very versed at covering tracks, because this is one of those things where I feel like the defense could possibly be like, yeah, they could use this to work in their favor. Barry was essentially like, look, you know, I know it's illegal, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I, you know, basically sedate deers, I shoot them, you know, do the tranquilizer thing, and I saw off their antlers to sell them. I know it's wrong, but I did it, so you will find that kind of stuff on the property. Now, again, here's my whole thing with that. Do I personally think that he shot her with a tranquilizer gun to, you know, knock her out or whatever? Yes, I do. Do I think the evidence supports it? I think circumstantially it does. I, the whole thing about them not being able to find 100% of the, well, we didn't actually find the gun, but we know he knows how to do something else with it. I think that the pings are totally shady. I think they also line up with him chasing her around the property in this event that took place, whatever we'll call it a catastrophic event, right? His excuse about doing the deer antler thing and you know using the dark gun or whatever it was to knock them out and cut their things off, that's where I'm like, okay, so I mean he went ahead and called that out. But also he could have just been smart and being, you know, proactive about the whole thing. So there's that. I feel like depending on what all keeps coming out about this, his defense could possibly poke holes in this right here. Uh, because I'm just like, you know, I just, I don't know. This is very wishy-washy right here. And again, this is an assumption that they never find Suzanne, right? Because if they do, you know, then they could obviously run some tests, do that kind of thing and see if something came up in her system. And there you go, problem solved. So I, I that, those are my thoughts on that. So let's go ahead on to the next thing. So let's talk about the door frame picture. Okay, so in this picture you see the door frame is broken. It looks like it has been ripped out and you know, it looks 
pretty good. Pretty good break there. Now, the prosecution the state will say they talked to the former owners. They're like, nope, that wasn't that way. They would show it to Barry. He has no idea what it is. The state feels like this was done during the argument with Suzanne, whatever, in those catastrophic moments. Maybe she locked herself in there. He broke the door out. And that kind of a situation happened. Okay, so in this scenario, do I think that this is good evidence? Again, circumstantially, I think all of this evidence paints a story, right? Do I think he was chasing around the house and something like this happened? A hundred percent. A hundred percent I think something like this happened. Do I think his lawyer might be able to talk his way out of this individually? Yeah. I mean, right off the bat, I'm like this. I'm like, well, how do we know? What if one of the daughters did something? I mean, they can obviously bring them on the stand, right? But this is something where it's like, well, what if Susan, uh, you know, at some point did something and she's not here to say yay or nay to it. Um, but it looks like a very severe break. It looks like somebody probably kicked the damn door in, right? Um, and again, who's to say? Because when we get into these text messages and we see how she talks about Barry and his temper and all that kind of stuff, I mean, I'm just like, whether it was in this argument or another one, I mean, to me, I'm just like, yeah, the, he probably did do this at one point. You know what I mean? They weren't getting along. They, it sounds like they were arguing a lot. If she went in the bedroom and locked the door and he was like, you know, angry enough about it, yeah, he's probably going to, he looks like a big guy, just bam you know open the door and break it so again this paints a very eerie picture because i do feel like we're looking at whether it was done on the night before or the, you know the whatever time the event happened whether it was done then or another event it just it doesn't have a good vibe to it okay so now let's talk about the arm and hand injury pictures of barry so looking at these here's my thing you know if i hold my finger up to it i'm like i can kind of see that being you know a finger of basically the state saying that these are defensive wounds or not defensive wounds you know uh suzanne trying to defend herself against him um and so i don't know what fingernail you know scratches look like in this capacity um I don't know. I, I just, I feel like they could explain this away, unfortunately. Do I think it adds to the overall story? Yeah. You know, I mean, sure. But also, I just look at, you know, playing devil's advocate, and I'm like, well, he, he does construction type stuff. Who's to say he didn't get this from, you know, whatever he does? When I go and look at the hand one, I, I'm just, that doesn't do much for me. I'm just like, okay. He, I mean, you've seen people who work with their hands really hardcore, especially someone like him who's like out there doing crazy stuff. I'm like, they're going to always have something, you know, they're, this is not abnormal. Again, I'm no expert though with stuff like this, so I don't know what these injuries look like. I don't, I've never really seen somebody be like, these are these exact injuries, not from the top of my head. I know I have in these cases we follow, but that one again, I just feel like unfortunately it's going to be easily explainable away, if you will. Okay. So let's talk about the hotel. You know, at this point, we, we know he got that hotel. She's missing. He had this big job out there. We heard from the workers who were there. What they had to say sounded very, you know, not on the up and up in regards to, it seemed like a very quick put together type situation to create an alibi, in my opinion. So the photograph of him bringing the shovels and the tool stuff in, you know, he was seen going in and out multiple times, changing shirts constantly, bringing these tools in. For me, a huge thing is, why are you bringing these tools in there? Why would you bring these in there, right? On top of all the stuff that we know that the worker said, like he didn't have the proper stuff in his truck to do this job, something seemed weird about it, you know, the room smelled like chlorine or whatever it was. So this to me seems weird. It seems like maybe he was bringing certain things in to clean them with something. What? I do not know. Now also in all this, let's talk about this trash. This is the trash is the thing for me that I'm like, hmm. But again, when I look at what he's saying about it, I'm like, damn, he might. He might have a good one on this one. Now, if you remember, if you followed the Dulos case, I mean, that's kind of what brought them down was the dumping random garbage bags all over town. So there's this evidence of Barry going to multiple garbage places, throwing garbage away uh, on the 10th. This is not good, right? They've never been able to identify what was in the garbage. Obviously, the state is saying he's throwing evidence away. Do I personally believe that? Yes, I do. Barry is saying that he was doing this to avoid paying dumping fees, like throwing, you know, paying to have to throw the garbage away, landfall fees, whatever it's called. Um, do I think that that could be plausible? Sure. You know what I mean? That, absolutely. I get it. 
What is weird to me though is I'm just like, okay, if you're gonna say that, like you're gonna do some, you know, construction stuff, I'm gonna do that to avoid paying this. I'm just like, really? Like you're cutting corners to that degree? Are you serious? And then secondly, I'm like, well, if you're trying to do that, why are you throwing them away in multiple places? And I'm sure he would say, oh, well, one was full. You know what I mean? Like whatever, the, there's gonna be an excuse for all of it. But that whole thing of, oh, well, I'm, you know, I, I, I was just trying to save a little bit of money. I'm just like, okay, like, I mean, that seems so dicey. It doesn't even make sense. But again, I, I could see him saying that, right? I could see him kind of being that type of person. But for me, the full stop on it is the fact that he went to multiple places and was like throwing these garbage stuff at just random places. Again, the same with the duelist thing where it's like, really? I mean, come on, like, it, could you be any more obvious, right? Uh, it is very unfortunate that they were not able to determine what was in this garbage because I have a feeling if they could, that this would have been like very quickly psh, arrested. You know, so done. You know, he wouldn't have been out for as long as he was even. Okay, so all that being said, right? So those are the main things that like jumped out to me that I wanted to talk about as far as the document goes, in addition to what we're about to do. I want to go through the text messages between Susan, Suzanne and her friend, right? Because I think after looking at all this stuff where it's like, well, you know, defense could say this and I feel this way. And then you start reading these text messages. That's where to me, the story kind of comes together. And it's like, we're hearing from her from beyond, right? Of, I don't want him to get away with this. You know what I'm saying? Like it just has that feeling to it to me. Um, so what we're gonna do is this, is I'm gonna do this a little bit different where I switch the stuff up here. The easiest way that I know how to do this is to basically put them on screen and read them. And so I'll either minimize my picture or just do it over, but I'm gonna try and record it on one screen and then put it up. So I mean, what I'm getting at is we're going down a technological street that the sofa ain't never been down before, okay? So I mean, it could be something where I record it all and then it's gone, it hits cover and floor. It ain't gonna do good. Okay, so I don't know. We might have to record it twice, but if you're seeing this, then it worked, and so there's that. So anyways, let me get this set up and then we'll jump into it. Okay, everybody, so what I've done is I've opened up my screen over here. I'm gonna be reading through these with y'all. I'm gonna stop to make commentary, that kind of a thing, right? So let's just scroll on over here. So the first page, this is Sunday, September 1st, three o'clock in the afternoon. Susan writes, need your prayers for peace today. Been a tough day. How is your kidney pain better? Okay, sweet friend or sweet something. We'll pray for peace with health or relationships. Relationships. He pulled Macy in again and left. My heart hurts for her. Those are such hurtful ways to help himself feel better. I'll pray for Macy too. That is heavy stuff for a 16 year old girl. Have you spoken with the girls privately at all about this? Not on a deep level, but open the door for them to ask you questions. It's such a hard subject, I know. He's not stable. It's guilt and desperate. And let's see what the next page is. Uh, desperate measures he's taking. Yes, she knows more than she should. My heart is aching for what he did today. She and I had a peaceful, fun week. He came in and wrecked it and left making her feel bad for him. It's sick. He looks for any reason to run. It can be small and he blows up and takes off. I believe there's still another. I can't with him. He's too good at the manipulation. I feel stuck. I can't let my health decline again. Okay, so let's just pause there for one second. So this whole thing starts painting this picture. I mean, immediate turmoil, right? She feels like he's, you know, using the daughters to manipulate and, you know, emotionally manipulate and oh, feel bad for me and this is what's going on. Almost like overstepping boundaries of a parent of letting them in on like adult stuff, if you will. I know these were older girls. I mean, we're not talking about kindergartners here. But nonetheless, this is just kind of what I'm getting from uh, Susan. And then also the fact that, you know, she's saying he's too good at manipulation. I feel stuck. I can't let my health decline. I mean, you can tell like, wow, this really has taken a toll. The friend continues. Did he just get home from his trip? Probably feels guilty for missing her B-Day. This way he can manipulate it into a situation where he doesn't uh, look like the bad guy. Look like the bad guy, but a victim again. Yep. Does he ever do anything wrong? He was gone Tuesday night until last night. Called yesterday and said he was injured again with his leg and was coming home. Yesterday was supposed to be the first day of season. It was all so strange. He kept telling me his phone is going to be off because he didn't have enough battery again. 
The friend says, that is really weird. I'm so glad you and Macy had a good week. I'm sure she can feel the difference when he is there too. Okay, again, let's kind of stop for a second. So this part right here where she's saying this whole thing of it again, I don't know how different households or whatever, but where she's like, oh, his phone, he's saying his phone's going to be off and this and that. I mean, that to me, when you're setting up like blocks of time that you're going to be unavailable to your spouse, it's a little odd. But again, maybe this is normal for them. I don't know. Um, so that's it. Let's continue. Almost to clear his conscience, you can you can look me in the eye the whole time. He couldn't. Same this morning when he told me his stories, no eye contact. I can't handle the unstableness. The day he cut his leg, he accused me of wanting to go back to town to get his meds and talk to someone. I came back with, I can't question you about another, but you can me. He literally opened his door while I was driving up the mountain like he was going to jump. His usual tactic when I bring up another. Then he pulled girls in and told them everything that day. I lost all respect for him that day. Okay, so again, let's pause. So we know now, right, that, uh, that we know for sure that she was having an affair. And I'm not shaming her for that. I'm not anything of that. It just is what it is. But I also feel like, so she's accusing him of this. So do I feel like he could have been? Absolutely. I mean, you know, it just, again, I don't know him as my bias, but I just, it absolutely would not shock me. Some of the stuff that we're hearing about blocked out time going here and there, gaslighting, all this type of stuff. So if you go on the assumption of he was doing something behind her back too, then you have two people who are both having affairs and accusing the other of doing that. Now, you know how it's like, but then you can also go this route. You know how like when they say like, if somebody's doing something, they'll expect the same behavior of someone. So maybe he wasn't, but he's just kind of like this unstable hot mess. But she was like, well, because I'm doing this, he must be too, right? I mean, we don't, it, I haven't seen evidence otherwise yet. So... You know, but again, the behavior she's talking about, I just feel like, yeah, that could 100% be the case. Okay, so let's keep going. I would be interested to hear his conversations with the girls. Macy mentioned us separating today or divorcing. She wants us happy. She's tired of the tension. She's, she said she should just go to Gunnison and live with Mal. My heart broke to hear her. He plays the hurt one. Does he have enough balls to talk to them with you there? Says he loves me. Can't handle the pain for me not giving him love he needs. Doesn't mention all the damage he's done to me physically, mentally. Okay, so let's stop right there. So when she says this whole thing about the all those he's done to me physically, mentally, now, you know, it's like, is she talking about just the I can't get sick again, that kind of thing, like he's like physically making her sick type situation. Uh, the fact that her kids pick up on stuff, right? So, and that's clearly going on in this situation. You know, one daughter saying, I should go up here and live with my other sister, Mal, and you know, all this stuff. Um, it's that's it's unfortunately clearly going on. Uh, when the kids are saying that they think that you should divorce, I mean, they're definitely seeing red flags, right? Uh, the mom and dad aren't happy. Okay, let's continue. How do you feel about separating from him? He sat there as the ringleader the day he cut himself and told them all the things I believe and got them all upset and was just sitting back and egging on as if he felt justified and happy they were side taking his side. It was sickening. I told him I was hurting for two years and they never knew because that's what parents should do. I feel no peace when he's here. I something don't safe around him. He's lost my trust. He will do anything to come out looking good. It makes me someone I don't like. I'm sorry, I just feel lost today. This is the lowest I felt. I hate burdening. We'll get that in a second. Okay, there's so much in this one. First of all, Notice how like the girls completely stand by the father, and again, I'm not here to critique that, whatever, but hearing her talk about this right now of, he told them all this stuff that I believe and got them all upset and you know egging them on and all this. So we, we see, again, assuming that this is all true, we see that this is a tactic that he uses, and we can assume that I'm sure that he's probably still doing that. Him pulling the girls in and telling them all this like very intimate stuff while, you know, him and him and Susan are fighting and all this stuff, you know, it's just, it's not, that's not good, right? Um, now, her response is, you know, I, for two years, I kind of kept this in because, I mean, I agree. It's like, 
some of the stuff you just don't burden your children with, right? Until it's time of, look, we're going to divorce, whatever. So the fact that she doesn't feel safe around him, he's lost all of her trust, and he'll do anything to come out looking good, this is very concerning, right? But the fact that she, this is a huge jump to say, I don't feel safe around somebody from, I'm sick of somebody, I, I can't stand them, I can't trust them, they might be cheating, to I feel I don't feel safe, right? That's a very big statement. Okay, so let's keep going. I think when I press about there being another, he resorts to this extreme behavior to scare me so that I won't bring it up again. I'm sure. I wanted to try to make it work until Macy was on her own. I wouldn't feel safe alone with him. I don't see how I can get over the damage done. I feel numb. I've told him they, and he said, okay, well, let's just tell the girls I'm leaving and how you feel and you don't want me. I sound so terrible. I'm sorry. I know I've done things to hurt us too. Many things. Like I said, it's made me someone I don't. We'll get to that in a second. So the thing she's talking about with basically him gaslighting, the scenario of she's talking to this, you know, are you seeing another woman and he does something to scare her or whatever. I mean, that's concerning, right? Uh, because to me, when somebody does something like that, that means that your answer is yes, right? You know what I'm saying? If they do something to that degree. So that part, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, over. Then when she says, you know, I wanted to make it work until Macy was on her own, I wouldn't feel safe alone with him. Again, very powerful statement here. It is one thing to say, and I can, I'll say it a hundred times over, I can't stand my spouse, they get on my nerves, I want a divorce, I want to move on, you know, I hate them, and I don't feel safe alone with them, right? I mean, this is point blank, I don't feel safe. That is a very concerning thing to say about your spouse. Okay, he has pushed you so far, this is terrible. But I wouldn't, but I would manipulate him right back and say, fine, let's go tell them. I've been recording all the things you've said and done to me in private. Let's see how they feel after they see all of that. Call us bluff. Makes me so sad, mad, frustrates. Not sure that it's the right thing, but I would be over it. They know he's hurt me. I believe Macy probably understands the most what is done to me. Mal just wants to hold us back. Again, you know, hearing now, first of all, I get the friend's response, but that's like the last thing I would do uh, because it just, I just don't, obviously it didn't end well, right? Um, he's just capable of whatever. Uh, again, all this, you know, the hurt, I, I just think that there's way more to this. Um, and maybe that even the girls know, maybe behind closed doors. I mean, I don't know. Uh, okay, let's continue. Macy said today she loves us both and wants us both happy. Her friend Hannah has divorced parents and seems happy. They get along well, like my mom and dad did after they split. Uh, not sure B. Barry could take that high road, though. It will eventually be shown to all when he doesn't take the high road. I think you have to think about long-term health here. I really do. Um, and then, uh, love you so much, sweet friend. Just want to be there to hug on you. I told Macy that today about guarding my health, and she said, Mom, why don't you divorce then? It broke my heart, but it's true. Thank you for being here. I'd be lost without you. I know I sound so one-sided. I've done my share of damage. I just want peace. I'm not sure Barry would... Okay, that's cut off. So, went from sad yesterday to mad today. Typical for me once I think things through. No accountability on where he is and phone off. At least it's peaceful. That is good at least. How was he last night when he came back? He never came back. Says he's staying out till Friday. He has a job outside Denver that starts next Monday. He will come back to prepare for that, I guess. I thought he just left for a bit, like a cool down. I didn't know he left for the week. It's so messed up. He says his leg is re-injured, but he's on a mountaintop. I think he was looking for a reason to leave yesterday. Can't worry about it. He's unstable and double-minded in all his ways. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. How can he do that with a hurt leg? Told Macy he was too hurt to stay and got her pity before he left. You've been so strong and so patient with him for so many years. Oh, Sheila, thank you. It's the truth. Not sure I know a single person who could do it. I was thinking this morning how long I would, how long I have out up with, 
how long I've put up with disappointment and just feel I'm to the end. Kind of like my mom. She had a long fuse, but once. Okay, so again, this part right here that we're reading through, I'm just kind of obviously commentating, uh, making my commentary after each page or whatever. So this whole thing of, you know, they get an argument, he leaves, it ends up being a week, uh, phones off, this and that. These are signs to me, and again, I'm just putting myself in these shoes of, yeah, your man is cheating, right? Uh, and again, it, it is what it is because I know that she had her own thing going or whatever, but I'm just, it paints a picture for what's going on. I just feel like there was this back and forth with them of this. Uh, I mean, there clearly was. Uh, but then again, just, you know, bringing the kids into the situation, looking for that kind of sorrow, for the children to have to choose a side you know, because I mean, one thing I would, I hope we find out eventually is what do the girls think, right? Because obviously they're staying very much by their father. So I'm just like, well, what do you think happened to your mother? You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, do you think she ran off? Like, what do you think? Okay, let's continue. So you were at, uh, so once, she, you know, she had a long fuse, but once she made her decision, it was firm. That was in relation to her mother. You were at your end before you moved and gave him another chance to start fresh. I don't think it'll change. I know. The older he gets, I think it will get worse. The instability. I was thinking of my, I was thinking of my Kokomo talks with you and how broken I was. I would press forward. Uh, thinking about a job you would enjoy and how you can live a happy and healthy life and make a what if plans. Yes, I have been thinking that way. I need peace. It's scary how good that sounds. Fast forward and think about life worth living worth. Hold on. Fast forward and think about life worth him with him the next several years. If it doesn't change with him, I mean, once Macy's gone, I won't be able to do it. Once Macy's, I won't feel safe. I've tried to hold on for her, but even she's weary of it and asking why we don't separate. It may take some time to plan and get through all of it, but I don't think it will be an easy road with him. Once, But once you are through it, I feel it will be so much better. I sort of wish he would just get fed up with me and leave. Okay, so we're going to just continue on here. Again, we're just hearing more of this, you know, the, obviously Macy knows there's serious issues, right? She, I mean, this is, this sounds very toxic for her to be involved in as the, the child. I mean, I feel bad for her. Um, okay, so she, again, the next page, Susan just, Susan wants him to get fed up. Uh, does that sound bad? Being a part may be more of a blessing for Macy, and then she doesn't start have to worry all the time. I know I feel so bad for her. No, but you know he wants to look good. So, yep, he wants me to be the bad guy. Well, if it means peace for you and the girls, you may have to. Um, let's see. You may have to be the bad guy. No, let's see. Yes. Uh, D, he's control all the finance. Does he control all the financial stuff? I worry he's been sick piling in case of this happening. I worry he's been stockpiling in case of this happening. I'm sure he has. It's a tangled web. I can't worry about that part. I've decided peace is worth more. So there's that. Uh, and, and again, it does sound like Suzanne's over it, right? But it's like she's on that edge of like, I mean, it's scary. And, and obviously you don't think that your partner's going to do something like what potentially allegedly ended up happening. So, you know, there's that. Okay, so let's keep going. I just want to make sure you don't struggle financially. I live in a shack right now. I'm sure he won't make it easy. He always he has always wanted control. The Lord will take care of your needs. You've been so faithful. Now it's time to let him carry you. I can't do anything until we get our full payment for the house. Maybe January. So remember all that going on when the like the house sale and all that. And it was like so weird about like, oh well this went through after this and so on and so forth. I just feel like that right there is a huge thing of control. She already said that he wants control. He had control, all this. So that was going to be when that money came through. Now, who knows what kind of fight that would bring up, right? Yes, I really want to talk to my sister about it. When she and John split, it was tough, but I'm sure she would have some advice. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Find someone who can advise you and help you through all the loops. She's been able to make it on the inheritance money from mom and Helen. That is good. Can you do that or does he have control of that too? Barry said he would pay all that back to me. I mean, that's that's a bad sign. Who knows? We used it to pay for this house and his bad decisions in silver. 
that's a whole other story. Very strange he's held on to it for years, even when we were losing bank. I feel he's supporting someone else. Again, this is, you know, this very well could be what's going on, right? Uh, she says, yikes, that's scary. He uses Sal as an excuse to give money to. I'll share more later. So, I mean, this is major revelations that she's sharing with this friend here. And it could be a huge potential for him wanting to disappear, turn phones off, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, unfortunately, you get different berries. One who is abusive and runs out, and one who is manipulating, and now one who is wanting to make things right. Uh, now, this is September 3rd, 2019, so uh, I stood my ground. He left again. So thankful you stood your ground, praying for your strength. Told him I'm done, that I need peace, not sure what's next. Did he say anything or just walked out? He said, if that's how you feel, I'm leaving. He tries to portray something he's not and hopes it will pull me back in. That had to be hard to do on your own, especially knowing how he is manipulating the girls. He probably never thinks you will stand your ground. Uh, told him when he involved the girls I was done with respecting him. He believes you need him so he can have that hold over you. He tried to use money as a tool and the girls didn't take the bait. bait. I figured he would use the money. That's what I was afraid of. Keep a close eye on money. He may try to move it or before you would like because that, because that freezes everything or before you file. And then she says, he said, so you want to be on your own? Want me to stop paying all your medical bills? That is just a scare tactic. He knows he can hold money over you. Is insurance through his work right now or do you have your separate? We bought it separately. Not cheap, but neither is a line of credit. We pay every month for silver. He's dabbled in. He will have to pay support and I'm sure it doesn't. he doesn't like that thought. I told him if he got angry at all, I was filing a restraining order on him. That shocked him a bit. Kept him together, though. I'm wondering if that is tied into the stuff with Sal, like you said. Bad investments and such. All that will have to come out if you do decide to move forward. He can't hide anything from me. Okay, so let's just pause there for a quick second. So, I mean, here she's standing her ground. She is, we are seeing, yep, money is the thing. He's going to hold that over her head. You know, I'm well. I'm going to do a restraining order against you if you get angry. I mean, again, this is not normal, and I'm not saying that in an insulting way. Just in the context of, that's not how that should go, right? This is a huge red flag. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, could use some extra prayers today. It's been rough. Uh, how are your spirits? You getting used to remote teaching. It's a new way of life. It's also crazy. Uh, trying to stay positive. What can I be praying for, my friend? Just strength going forward, taking care of myself physically in a stressful marriage. Macy and I had a very tough talk yesterday. Very needed, though. She sees and is so perceptive. She's weary of the tension here. She knows how he is toward me and almost begged me to divorce him. It was so sad, Sheila. She's st He's still pulling Mal in. I worry about her. She wants to please him and feels responsible for his happiness. My heart aches for them both in different ways. Maybe a longer answer than you needed, but I appreciate your love and prayers. You've been on my, extra, my heart extra these past couple of days. I think I was feeling your hurt. I'm thankful you were able to talk to Macy. Is Barry home now or is he still working? So interesting that they make this difference in the... God, or she makes this difference between the two daughters. You know, one feels responsible for the happiness, the other one's very perceptive, all that kind of thing. Because I think we might be seeing that kind of play out what's going on now. Because one thing that always fascinates me with this kind of stuff, and like the staircase with Michael Peterson was one of those, where I was like, what do you do when you lose one parent, you feel like the other parent did that, I mean, it's, again, you lose your entire family almost. You know what I mean? The, the the victims, obviously. But then if you go against your parent and, you know, if there's this murky gray water, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, you don't really come back from that, right? Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, not really. I feel unequipped. Wish I could just have an amicable talk, but dealing with a narcissist. Bing, 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 bing. We have this key word here. We've been looking for this word. It has been said. It has been stated. Macy said, Mom, we can move to Salida and both get jobs this summer. Her friend Hannah has been through this. It's good now, but she was alone with the fighting at home before. Uh, what does he want? Have you talked any more about splitting? It's so hard to know what's next. Trust in the Lord to guide. He threatens, but I've never come out and said, I... 
come out and said I wanted it today. He thinks I'm holding on till after Macy graduates, at least. He probably thinks I'm not strong enough to do it. Given finances, given finances, I don't want your mental health to plummet in the next two years that is so long. Let me know if you have any advice. Macy assures me she would be fine with it yesterday. She said, Mom, why don't you just do it without telling him? She knows his manipulative ways. I don't either, and I feel it slipping. I finally got him off the idea of building a house. I was so anxious thinking about it. I think it was just my inner self. No, I shouldn't move with him along with the chaos. She even mentioned a restraining order. I'm sick. I had a conversation like that with my 16-year-old. I guess it just pause there for a second. And I mean, I agree. This is, what's so sad is to see how close she was to getting away. And what's so sad is also to see, I mean, her daughter picks up on all this to AT. You know, let's just move. We can make it on our own. What about a restraining order? Again, so when I look at the previous stuff before, and I'm like, well, a defense attorney could say this, and a defense attorney could say that, and da, da, da. this is the stuff that keeps me coming back to, but my opinion, my bias, if you will, with the cases that I think he did do this. I think he did set the scene up. I think he did dispose of her. I think he was covering up at the hotel. It's because of these kind of conversations. Uh, I do, and let's, so let's continue with that conversation. I do worry about your safety. If things move forward, you would have to protect yourself. I'm not sure how much money you have access to, but I would try and find a way to get to set some aside, if at all possible. Building a house would not be good right now, and I think having those conversations with Macy are definitely hard. I know you don't want her to have to worry about all of that. Think about you and your mom, though. You got through some hard times together. And she says, LOL, that made me laugh. We are sisters. I needed to laugh. I need some Sheila time. Ditto, sister. It's Jekyll and Hyde again. He and Mal again, or he and Mal were together last night probably switching it on when he talks with her i feel like i'm crazy i just had a conversation with him pretty much told him i can't be healthy and stay in this what did he say he threatens to come home and pack where is he now he will make a scene and use the players working uh where is, is mallory home or at her apartment they're both home and so then this all switches back over here and we're just going to do a little flip here and then let's come back up here. So March 25th. Okay. So here we are. I'm just looking at the time on well, the camera. He is going, he's not going to be rational. Did something happen yesterday that brought on this or is it just everything normal and it's building up and wearing you down? And she says money stuff. It's sketchy. Was he planning on going with Mallory or was that just a snag at getting someone on his side? She says, I need to ask your opinion on it. He also asked me if I'm talking to anyone about our marriage like friends make sure he doesn't see your phone you keep it with you yes when will he be home probably late uh he came home when the girls are gone he won't speak a divorce begging for another chance i'm so torn but in my heart i know who he is isn't that what he always says how long can you keep forgiving him that was convenient timing too that's what i told him he threw the 70 by 7 at me always using the scripture when it's convenient Okay, now this part right here where it's like he's going to throw scripture and all that. I mean, again, the guy seems like a classic narcissist, right? It also seems really suspect that he, like, I just feel like he was probably monitoring her on some level, you know. It always also makes me nervous with text messages because he, a lot, he could have gotten access to read these kind of things, right? And it, he just seems like a very dangerous, volatile person to know the information she was talking to others about, especially when she was talking to another dude. Okay, how are things on the home front right now? Any changes? This is April. It changes like the wind as usual. Long text this morning of apology and declaration. It's sad. I feel bad. I don't want to cause him to do that, to have to do this. There's just becoming, there's just become a point that the reality of what's never been there is sobering. And I've accepted that. What I've accepted what it is. He can't change the core person, you know. Makes me wonder what the young me was thinking. Does he feel that reality too? I was a broken girl just looking for stability and no confidence in who I was. He thinks we are great as long as he's getting what he wants. The young us can't see past the outside of things. That's the wisdom they told us about that we would have till we got older. Wish there was a way to have more of that uh, in our younger years. 
Uh, I have regrets, but Mal and Macy are, sweet, are the sweetest parts to this. No mistake there. So very true. God's plan, uh, every bit of it. Thank you for asking, how's the remote teaching going? Going well so far. I think our governor will announce that we are out the rest of the year. Okay, so we're going to stop the text message stuff with that. So again, reading through the text messages, seeing the concern, the escalation of it, her coming to these realizations, again, it, for me, it just paints this picture that doesn't put him in a good light. I do think it's interesting to watch her go from being afraid of, you know, leaving that kind of a thing, not sure what to do, which I think is completely normal. I mean, reading these, I'm like, this is all very normal thoughts that she's having, right? And fears, right? It is scary to leave somebody. And especially when she's saying, oh, I was young, you know, I was looking for stability, this that, and the other. Yeah, but then the more you learn about Barry through her, and granted, again, my my bias is I'm looking at it only through her lens of this, right? So there is that. But there's just other things that are going on. I'm not hearing anything from this friend of, this doesn't sound normal, you know, I've never known any of this or whatever. Like, this just sounds like every day for him, right? And so the fact that he pulls the girls into the situation is just another layer of like, ugh. Uh, but the fact also that her daughter sees this stuff and just wants, you know, it, her parents to be separate and happy which is unfortunate but again you know kids can be very uh, perceptive in things so anyways that's it I appreciate you if you're still sitting here watching uh, let me know your thoughts on this what do you think do you think the defense is going to be able to poke holes in the evidence that we're seeing so far? Do you, for, you know, do you think Barry did it? Um, what do you think of the text messages? What do you think of the video? I'm really curious to see how everybody feels about the entire situation. So, anyways, again, thank you for watching. Roscoe has retired to the little sofa over here. I don't know if you can see him, but he's resting. He's tired of movie starring today, okay? But he thanks you too for coming and hanging out with us on the sofa. And until the next time that we go there, around this sofa with this little doggy. We'll see you soon.